Jesus is inviting everyone called by His name to go. Go and create a million smiles, a million memorable moments, a million relationships. Who will go? I will go. Here's how. So this is one of the most powerful way of going like Jesus. You can go like Jesus with acts of healing. Now, we don't need to prove if this works or not. Jesus himself modeled it. He spent more time healing than he spent preaching. This was strategic. Nobody knows the human mind like Jesus. And people flocked him. And this is why he used this method. And this is why the church was introduced very early to the concept of making health important in its ranks. Now, you might ask yourself, I'm not a physician like you, Dr. Bryce. You are trained, you're a specialist in internal medicine. You can appreciate the acts of healing. I have no training. I can't even spell biology. I, 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 I didn't even think of becoming a nurse or a physician. I'm not a radiologist. How can I help people? Well, you will be surprised. Jesus is not going to call you to use acts of healing if he did not give you the capacity. And let me illustrate this for you. I know individuals with MD, PhD, it's the highest degree that you can get in medicine. I know cardiologists, I know oncologists, I know heads of department of endocrinology who doesn't know this one fact that is written in mind, personality, mind, character, and personality. Evil habits and practices are bringing upon men diseases of every kind. The link between your evil habits, your lifestyle, most doctors, even though they were trained to understand this capacity, paid no attention at all. And the only thing that really works is a prescription. So you can go to your neighbor and your neighbor that is eating a large meal at 10 o'clock at night and is having diabetes, high blood pressure, and doesn't matter how much medicine that person gets, there is no benefit because of this one bad habit. You can help this individual work them through this. Now, here it gets even better. I know a lot of clergy from different denominations who don't understand this one principle. Let the understanding be convinced by education as to the sinfulness of abusing and degrading the powers that God has given. People can recognize that their habits of abusing and degrading their bodies is an offense to God. That one principle, if people recognize this. I gave in a seminar once at a Baptist church. Well, I remember 260 people one night. And one lady at the end of the seminar of, of four, of, of, that we did over the whole weekend, she came to me and she said, you know, Dr. Bryce, I came just out of curiosity. But when you outline the link to the Bible and the link of what I'm eating with spirituality, you got my attention. Today, her diabetes is reversed. This one principle. And here it gets even better. And many of us who have been Christians for many, many years don't re recognize or understand this one concept. Let the mind become intelligent and the will be placed on the Lord's side. And there will be a wonderful improvement in the physical health. In other words, if you're smart enough 
to place the will on the Lord's side. In other words, if you can get people to be smart to recognize that they can actually ask God for help with their health. One of my patients was struggling with, with, with uh, obesity, excessive weight for years. She said, Dr. Bryce, I've tried everything. I want to get started on some medication. And I said to her, I know you're a really good Christian. Have you ever asked God to help you? He said, you know, Dr. Rice, I never, I've, I've, never, I've never really asked him. You know, six months later, she lost 40 pounds and she's still losing. Just by placing the will on the Lord's side, making a decision of asking God to help you. Now, you don't need a PhD for that. You don't need an MD for that. All you need to do is to understand that there are principles that you can share with individuals, their, with their neighbor next door that you can help them. Acts of healing. There's the story of the demoniacs. You find it in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. So important that these multiple gospels recorded it. Two men that were, they, they were stark staring mad, destroying, you talk about domestic terrorism, they were destroying the whole neighborhood. And Jesus healed them. And they asked Jesus to allow them to follow him. But Jesus had something better for them. Luke chapter 8 verses 38 to 40 says, Jesus said to, to, to the men when they came to ask Jesus for a relationship, to follow, Jesus said, return to your house and tell what great things God has done for you. And they followed. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. The demoniacs went and told their story. As a result of that, friends, ten cities were waiting on Jesus. And it came to pass that when Jesus was, was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. They went to ten different cities, the, the capitalists, and told their story. Friends, you're telling your story of how what God did for you. You're healing yourself and you're healing others. When you tell your story of how God healed you, how you gave up the addiction to pork and bacon, and how God gave you that miracle, you couldn't believe that you could get over alcohol or cigarettes. And when you share your story, that story heals the individuals who hear it. You don't need a PhD. You need, don't need an MD for this to happen. I had the privilege of being a, one of the evangelists in Central Jamaica Conference, where individuals were helped by an organized program called WHEEL. And we went around the conference just helping individuals. If you needed help to raise chickens, they would come by and they would partner with you. If you lost your roof in a hurricane. Friends, through these acts of kindness, during the shutdown of COVID, they baptized over 600. The last count I heard was 720. And it keeps going, acts of kindness. South um, Columbia Union, I had the privilege of attending a symposium on evangelism in the Inter-American Division. And just listen to the reports that come all over the division. And Pastor Solis, President Solis, from the South Columbia Union, talked about how they use Christ's method. Christ's method of, 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 of compassion, 
Christ's method of healing, hospitality, and kindness. And they also used targeted, focused prayer. They, they would pray for their neighbors. They would, they, would, they would, under COVID, under shutdown, they baptized over 8,000 individuals. Friends, as we reach out to create a million smiles, as we go to form a million relationships, if we recognize through humility, God can use us. We can go on divine appointments. We can targeted, focused prayer, pray for the people around us. We can form small groups and invite them to small groups. We can go and perform acts of kindness to our neighbors, acts of hospitality, and create memorable moments that will, they will want to be among us, and acts of healing. First, we model this health for ourselves, and we share with them all the lifestyle changes. You don't have to be, be a physician going over your neighbors and giving injections. No, you can just help them with their lifestyle. These are acts of healing. And so we have a million smiles, a million relationships. And so we're hoping that you will join us. Now you know how. Let us get together and form a million smiles. Here's the video one more time. A million smiles, a million relationships. The world is in pain. People are hurting and broken, gripped by fear and anxiety. Depression is so intense, many can barely cope. Many are running on empty, filling the void with addictions. COVID has taken its toll and we face a health crisis. In addition, there is a crisis of compassion as selfishness and division rule. We will lose many if something isn't done quickly. If you could participate in a global initiative that transforms humanity, would you do it? Jesus invites all individuals, small groups, churches to bring compassion back and transform a million lives. You are invited to engage in an unprecedented transformative global virtual event, your best life yet in 40 days, coming February 5th through March 20th, 2022. Your best health, Dr. Errol Bryce, MD. Your best you, Pastor Jacob Cerns. Your best relationships, Dr. Dolby Cross. Your best finances, Pastor Jared Sanji. Your best future, Pastor Sean Harris. Your best decisions for Jesus, Pastor Richie Halverson. And your best assignment, Dr. Carlton Berg. You don't want to miss it. How do I get involved? I'm glad you asked. First, decide, I will go. I will go with the compassion of Jesus. I will go and form a relationship that brings a smile. To participate, register at yourbestlifeyet2022.org. Jesus went about doing good and healing. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Let us humbly follow in His footsteps, depending on Him. If we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous and tender-hearted and pitiful, there will be 100 conversions to the truth, where now there is only one. TC 9 189. Between now and February 5, 2022, begin to form rescue relationships now. Go with a friend. Pray the compassion prayer every day. Go on a divine appointment. Form habits of compassion. Pray strategically three times a day for a chosen territory and a chosen friend. Form your coordinating committee and meet weekly. Go and bond with the hearts of the people around you by touching their lives with 10 million acts of loving kindness, acts of hospitality, and acts of healing. Get involved in at least one of 300,000 small groups. Take part in giving your share of 1 million Bible studies and let's pray for 300,000 souls through baptism. Watch God do something miraculous by February 5th, 2022 through March 20th, 2022. Wouldn't it be wonderful if this becomes a way of life? For more information, dates, and times, register at yourbestlifeyet2022.org. Register today.